I'm going to apologize in the beginning to my communications staff. Uh, they give me uh, nice notes and things to keep me on track. Uh, but as they are well aware, uh, I don't always follow them. So I'm going to start uh, sort of at the end and, and rearrange a few things and then um, perhaps not follow the script. So I want to um, I want to begin with a few thank yous because I don't want to forget them, right? I, I uh, you know, when you give remarks and things, you know, sometimes you come to the end and you have forgotten to make sure that you thank the people who you need to thank. So I want to thank, uh, and I know that we've already heard this a little bit from people, but uh, Birgit. Uh, Rivard and her colleagues from, communica from Communications, Human Resources, Teacher of the Year Committee, uh, everybody involved in making tonight a great success. Could we really give them a, a big round of applause? And I want to um, also uh, make sure, because um, I know uh, my uh, my friend and colleague and, and our county leader, uh, Mr. Baker, uh, Rashern, mentioned uh, the board members a few minutes ago, and I know that when Dr. Eubanks was up here, he introduced some of them, but you know, we're all in this as a team, and you are too, and so um, um, I'll come back to Mr. Baker in a minute, but uh, Dr. Eubanks with the board, the, the president of the board, Carolyn Boston, the vice chair of the board, Patricia Eubanks, uh, Lupe Grady and uh, Sonia Williams has, has uh, arrived. She was coming, coming from uh, another uh, thing she needed to be at. Uh, they are awesome part of our team. Our board, our board deserves credit, a lot of credit, because they too have stepped up and they too have put a stake in the ground about the future of Prince George's County. Uh, and the work that you do and the needs of our children. I want to uh, recognize uh, my exec team. I have some members of my exec team here. I don't think they're quite all in the same place, but I know that I see my two awesome uh, deputy superintendents, uh, Dr. Monique Davis and Dr. Sean Joseph. They're, they're over here. They're not waving. I'm guessing they think you all know them, but that's them over there, you know. <laughs> Dr. Maritza Gonzalez, a fellow Terp, uh, and, and uh, just awesome member of the exec team working on uh, diversity uh, issues, particularly in the, the Latino community. And I see Cito Narcisse over there on the far side, I think. And Keisha Bullock, our communications, uh, our chief communications officer is over there. And I'm not sure I saw other members of the exec team. Uh, 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 Helen Coley, I apologize. They moved the balloons, though, so now I can, now I can see you. When I was up here a minute ago scanning, I didn't see you. Um, and I also want to recognize Ken Haynes, president of Teachers Association. A little, a little known fact when I... Uh, when I, when I came back, um, it was quite an interesting coincidence for me that, that um, you know, you talk about, you know, how things kind of, you know, they go around, they come around, you know, kind of stuff. So I knew, I knew Lou um, uh, Robinson, you know, for many years with the Teachers Association and things, and, and, uh, and when I was in the process of coming back to find out uh, that my former colleague for eight years at Northwestern High School was, was uh, president of the Teachers Association was just an added bonus uh, because we know each other and there's no like, you know, he, he, he's worked with me as a principal, I've worked with him as a, as a great AP teacher and, and so having that relationship really helps uh, move things ahead quickly. I also, I don't know all, uh, the representatives of all the, the business partners that helped uh, make this possible tonight, but I know that um, uh, Gil uh, Aragona from NTA Life is here tonight. I'd like him, him to uh, wave. And, and I want to tell you that my, uh, the, the team that was running this was coming up just a hair short uh, in, in getting this thing all together. And, and I understand that Gil 
uh, stepped up and said, do what you need to do and we'll take care of it. And that's awesome. Um, I, know there's, I know there's one other business, business uh, supporter here, uh, but I don't know if there are others. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to her. Are there others? Of our business, representatives of businesses that sponsor? Well, I appreciate you know their sponsorship. So I also want to recognize Victoria Samuels, who's here from the credit union. Okay. Now let me tell you why I say that. Because I do, I, I you know I don't do this to embarrass her. I do this because it's the truth. I've been a member of the Educational Systems Federal Credit Union since 1978, when I started teaching the first time in Prince George's County. It's a long time. Don't try to do the math. Um, <laughs> but uh, they are awesome. And, and uh, I really appreciate not only the fact that, that uh, what, what little bit of money and my mortgage and my credit card and all that kind of stuff are all there, and so I need them to be successful, right? Because uh, I don't want them to call the mortgage or anything. Um, but they're great business partners, they're great partners in the community, and I, I just really appreciate uh, what they do for us as well. So for other business partners, I don't know, but again, if we could give a round of applause to our business partners, they're doing a great job. And the rest of them are listed in your program. So, so that's sort of the business part, and I just wanted to get that out of the way so I didn't forget. So, so, so far, so good. She's nodding her head. She's like, okay, so far, so good. So, so this is, for me, uh, one of the most exciting nights in our calendar year, in our school calendar year. Uh, because as, as Mr. Baker said, uh, you represent, you know, you in your own right are outstanding teachers and you're being recognized for that. But you're representative of the great teaching and learning that goes on in Prince George's County every single day. And too often we are not recognized for the great teaching and learning that goes on. You would think when you talk to some people in our community and some, some of our elected officials uh, that we are a disaster in every classroom, in, on every day, in every school, in every community, and it is just simply not the case. You are doing a fabulous job. So you exemplify that fabulous job. You exemplify that greatness that is Prince George's County. Every single day, Every single hour, every single minute of that every day, you are making a difference with the children in our schools, for our schools, for our county, for our state. You have shaped lives. You inspire. You set our children on their individual paths to greatness. Thank you for that. As you know, it's time to put this away now. <laughs> As you know, we recently released a strategic plan. That strategic plan is our roadmap to making sure that the great things that you do in your classrooms, in your schools, stretches to every classroom in every school, for every child, every day. The title of that strategic plan is The Promise of 2020. And it is imperative that the growth that we saw last year is multiplied tenfold. It is important that we show people that what's going on in your classrooms in your schools, for every child every day happens for every single child in every single classroom across our entire district. Because if that doesn't happen, then we can't be the great school district that I believe that we are. The potential that we have will not be realized unless we rise together to the challenges before us. Budget processes are interesting. <laughs> and our part of that budget process includes, in our case at least, perhaps not everywhere, a real and sincere dialogue between the parties. 
I talk with the board about where we are, what we're thinking about. And in December of every year, so far, I've released a budget to the board. And both years so far, the board has looked at that budget. They have not, by any stretch of the imagination, used the proverbial rubber stamp and said, good job, we're right where we want to be. <laughs> Doesn't happen in my life, right? And that's a good thing. That's what we have a board for. That's why we have these great board members sitting right here, because they're part of a team. We're all part of a team. So last year, the board said, we got to do more in parent and community outreach. We got to do more with academics. What, what are the goals? Where are we headed? You know, we want to, we want to, you're working on your strategic plan. We want to outline the mission and vision for this school district and the core values. That's our job as governance. I have to tell you, it's great to have a board that says, we want part of this. We want in. We don't want to just critique you. We want in. We want to be a part of this this greatness that we seek. This year, you know, we were hearing the headwinds. We were hearing, you know, so we were talking about, well, I don't know, you know, it's going to be hard even to sustain some of what we're doing. And so we were very cautious when we first released the budget. And you know what the board said to me? You know what the county executive said to me? Curtis Valentine, on behalf of the board, I know they were all talking. And, and Mr. Baker, they all said, within days of each other, what does it really take to move the district forward? What does it really take to get us out of the bottom rung of the state of Maryland year after year and move us up to the top 10? What does it take? And so we pulled on some of those things that we'd been talking about before. We, we, we pulled some people together, some people from schools, some people from central office. And we gave them a plan that we believe will move this district forward. And the strategy teams, again, included people from schools, from different you know, pieces of central office, all of us working together. And we laid out a roadmap. We laid out a plan on how we're going to move academic achievement on how we're going to improve uh, safe and supportive schools. And when I say we, again, I'm talking about that broader team, not just me and a couple people in the office somewhere. We, we talked about how we're going to improve community outreach, high-performing workforce, how we're going to improve our organizational effective. Those are five parts of the strategic plan. And I'm going to tell you why I bring it up in a couple minutes. So we went to the board. We said, here's what it takes, because that it's the next step of the process. But I said, we can't do that without resources. We're all ready just to get the great improvement we got in year one with a graduation rate overall improvement of 2.47%, the highest percent of any district in the state of Maryland, highest we've ever been since they started measuring the cohort rate. And for other groups of children, it went up and even higher. Special education, 8.02%. It's unheard of. That's your work, the work that you did in your schools, in your communities, with your children. We saw the data last year. Ninth grade promotion rate, graduation rate, almost identical numbers within a decimal point. Graduation rate, I mean, ninth grade promotion rate went up over 4% across our district. Higher in some schools than others, but 4%. So if that translates to 4% in graduation rate in a couple more years, we're there. We're at the state average in a couple years. We're above the state average in a couple years if we maintain that pace. There are other things to point to, too, but it points to your great work. But to do that in a sustained way and to improve, improve our SAT rates, our SAT scores, our ACT scores, our PSAT scores, our dual enrollment numbers, right, to continue to improve graduation rates, all the other pieces of the holding us accountable part of the strategic plan, we have to have resources. So Mr. Baker, 
And I want to be really clear. I, I, don't, I don't have to vote for him for county executive again because, it's, you know, he, he, he was unopposed. He won in a landslide. He should have won in a landslide. And I'll just selfishly say, and I, I don't know if I've ever told him this before, but I voted with him every, I voted for him every time he ran. I don't mind voting for a ticket that doesn't win. I want to vote for the right ticket. And Mr. Baker is the right ticket. And I don't say that selfishly. I met him when I was a high school principal at Northwestern High School. He's working on the Leadership Academy at the University of Maryland. I was doing a lot of work with student leadership in those days. And we had a lot of great meetings uh, over at the University of Maryland. And, and I just really valued his intellect and the work that he was doing and, and the team uh, were doing over at, at Maryland. Um, and, he, and when he was out door knocking one day, he knocked on my door. My wife answered, oh, Nancy, where's Kevin? So I was out cutting the grass in the backyard, and, you know, you're not always looking your best, you know. And uh, so Rashern walks around to the backyard, and I'm sweating, and, you know, you know I'm running for county executive. <laughs> um, you know, it was great. I voted for you that time, too. And, so, and if I could vote for you again, I would. Because we'd be a lot better off. If Mr. Baker had been our county executive for, uh, you know, a little longer than he has already because he's made great strides. And can you imagine if we'd made those great strides a decade ago? So, so I've been out. I've been out almost every night with our, our great county executive. And I haven't been out there because I have a single thing to get out of it. Right? You know, I'm, I'm back home where I want to be. I'm doing this because I want to do it, not because I have to do it. I'm doing this not because I've got some other aspirations. You know, maybe I could be the superintendent in New York or something. I don't want to be the superintendent in New York. I want to be the CEO, of the superintendent in Prince George's County. <laughs> Since the goon's going to the White House, maybe he could get Barack Obama to come back another couple times. That'd be great. You know, he's been here a couple of times uh, uh, in, in my short tenure so far, and, and we'd love to have him back a couple more times. It'd be fantastic. But we've been out to support you. We've been out because we admire the work that you're doing. We admire the dedication that you bring to the job. But we know that you need more support. We know that you need more help. We know that our children need more help. So we have a budget request to support our strategic plan that will do lots of things. So we hear from some of you, and sometimes I hear from many of you through, through Ken Haynes, about uh, facility issues, right? And uh, so this budget, may sound like it's not important, but we think it's really important. A second shift of maintenance so that we hire uh, in each of the eight shops that we have over in maintenance, five more people in each of those shops, five more HVAC people, five more plumbers, five more electricians, right? Right on down the list. So that when children leave our schools, we have somebody that can go in after they leave that isn't just the day shift, but somebody could come in there from you know, 3 to 11 or whatever, and fix the things that broke during the day that they can't do while the kids are sitting in the desks in your classroom. It's critically important. You know how much, how much maintenance needs we have. And, and it's really important. But we have other things to help with the instruction and the understanding of our kids. They include... Um, Things like, and I won't go through the whole list, I don't have the book right in front of me, uh, but I'll go through some of it. It includes a literacy coach in every school to work with kids who are behind in reading and math, to work with them in reading, math, language, arts, science, social studies, wherever they happen to be on those skills so that they can make up those deficits that they have and get on track with what they need. It includes, because we know we have more kids that can do higher level work than are currently doing them, and we know that some parents don't want their kids to leave the neighborhood school and go to centers, 
So we're going to put a gifted specialist, a gifted coordinator in every single elementary school in Prince George's County. It includes a digital literacy investment for iPads and Chromebooks for every child in third, fifth, and eighth grade. Because we know to show us the knowledge that they have that you've taught them on the park assessment, they've got to also be able to use the, the technology that the tests are given on. And we know we don't have enough of it. It includes some salary enhancements for our teachers. I know it's not the same as a trip to the White House. Two minutes? I'm being told to wrap it up. I got to go fast. Because we know that you should not be tempted to leave our district and go to other districts because you can make a little bit more money. And it's actually not a little bit more money. We know that. It's a lot of money. <laughs> we know, and we told the county council today, that if you started here and worked for 30 years, or you started in Montgomery County and worked for 30 years, that at the end of 30 years, you'd make $200,000 more next door. And that is not acceptable, ladies and gentlemen. It is the reason, it is the reason why since 2007, 2008 school year, we've had to replace 7,100 teachers in Prince George's County. And as I say to my colleagues in business, you couldn't even run your business, let alone be successful with that kind of turnover. And we're actually doing pretty darn good. We're just not yet great. So let me close, as I was asked to do, <laughs> and say this. Mr. Baker's been saying it very well, and he's got a beautiful graph that shows it. Our county, the people in our county, me, I live in the county, those of you the rest of you, most of you, I think, live in the county. We're not investing in our schools at the rate that our neighbors are. And it has a direct impact on the outcomes in our school district. Montgomery County puts in almost 65% of its school system's money. We put in 35% of ours. So when people start talking about 15 cents on the property tax rate, right, that doesn't even bring us up anywhere near that. The most recent Washington area boards of education, not my organization, not Ken's organization, not your organization, the boards of education organization, says that we are $2,500 in an investment per child, $2,500 behind, to, get to, to be held to the same standard as neighboring Montgomery County, as an example. And they've got all the other districts in there, too. We're behind pretty much all of them. So let me close with this, and when I'm finished, it's my pleasure to introduce Laura Sheldon in case I forget. <laughs> let, let me be, be very clear about why I'm out with my county executive, whom, whom I, you can tell I admire very much. I'm out every night because I believe in the promise of 2020. I believe that we can leapfrog past the other districts I'm talking about. There's no reason we can't score better than Somerset County. Somerset County, Dorchester County, Caroline County, Garrett County. There's no reason that we can't get where we said we're going to get in five years. But we need the resources to do it. Because our children in Capitol Heights, in Temple Hills, in Laurel, in Bowie, in Hydesville, they're worth every penny that the children are worth in Bethesda, that they're worth in St. Michael's, that they're worth in Garrett County, that they're worth in Columbia. Our children are worth every penny of it. 
And you as our teachers are worth every penny that every teacher in Bethesda or Columbia or Talbot County or Garrett County or Wooster County are worth. You're worth every penny of it. So now I'm going to ask one. No, I'm not going to ask for an offering. I'm going to ask for a favor. I'm going to ask for a favor. I'm going to, I'm going to ask for a favor. Because I'm out with my county executive every night almost. Took a night off to come here. I caught a little flack for coming here on time, but that's okay. We need to all fight the good fight. It can't be two or three of us. It can't be five or ten of us. Every one of you that works in this county has a county council member. Every one of you that lives in this county has a county council member. So therefore, some of you have two. You need to call them. You need to write them. You need to email them. You need to stop them in the grocery store. And you need to tell them that we'll fulfill the promise. They need to fulfill theirs.